From the days of the ancient philosophers to the age of the atom bomb, humankind has long suspected that all we know might not be all there is. Beyond the boundaries of our planets, our solar system, and even our galaxy, are the outer bounds of our universe. But beyond our universe, there's got to be something, right? And it is here that we find multiverse theory, or perhaps more accurately, a whole range of theories that attempt to describe universes far beyond our own. It's a tempting idea to explore the possibility that parallel universes might be completely alien to our own, existing alongside us, perhaps even within us or between us, in ways that we will never perceive so long as we live. But as many skeptics across time, and many in the modern day, will point out, the multiverse is an entirely hypothetical byproduct of human reason and imagination. It's astrophysical physical fanfiction in its highest form. According to its many naysayers, it's a concept that's entirely untestable, entirely unfalsifiable, and that flies in the face of every shred of evidence that humans have at our disposal. That our universe is tangible, and nothing beyond our universe has ever been perceived. So today we're gonna dig into the question of the multiverse, what it is, how it's supposed to work, why it all might just be a flight of fancy, and whether we, a set of humble little minds in a humble little universe, have any hopes of finding out for sure. To say that something as complex and far-fetched as the multiverse theory would have anything that we could describe as basics is perhaps more than a little laughable, and rightly so. But even still, it's important to be specific about just what sorts of concepts we'll be discussing here, and to do that, we've got to begin with the few fundamental things that most believers in the multiverse tend to agree on. At the core of the idea is one central, unavoidable claim that our universe is not the only one. Exactly how that works is up for debate. Some versions of multiverse theory suggest that other universes could be nested in our own, or ours could be nested in others, or that other universes might exist parallel to us in time or space or both or neither. But however you get there, the fundamental premise is the same. Our universe is not the only one. The scientific and philosophical basis for such a claim can be found in a few different spots, but the most well-known is inflation theory. A concept that relies on hypothetical events that are believed to have taken place just milliseconds after the universe began. In that incredibly brief moment, the universe expanded at unbelievable speed, inflating many times over from the infinitesimally small point in which all matter prior to that event was believed to be concentrated. Said an expert researcher in multiverse theory, Helen Deng, while speaking to Live Science, quoting here, Inflation does not end everywhere at the same time. It is possible that as inflation ends in some region, it continues in others. What that means is that it should be possible for inflation to happen in other regions of space-time, even though it stopped happening in ours. Not every iteration of multiverse theory gets to the multiverse answer through that same route, but many do. As for how its believers justify their faith in the multiverse, a fundamentally unprovable idea that's never been so much as observed, the sheer strangeness of our universe is perhaps the leading answer. Although everything around us seems perfectly normal, the idea that everything in the universe happened to line up just perfectly to create the universe as we know it is an incredible statistical improbability. Take, for example, the factors that create life forms like us. That a universe would have everything from stable atoms to light to gravity to an abundance of carbon and more. None of those things are guarantees, and given that there's no guiding principle that we can perceive that dictates the way a universe is supposed to be, the idea that everything just went so perfectly for humans on the universe's one and only attempt is a ludicrously unlikely to of events, except, well, it clearly happened, didn't it? Yet if we assume that there are, say, an infinite number of universes out there in some undefined multiverse space, then the sheer improbability of our existence makes a good deal more sense. And it's here that we've got to emphasize a particularly mind-bending point about multiverse theory. That there are a whole lot of visions and ideas on how the multiverse could work, and not just one. But the one uh, we've just described, known as eternal inflation, is one of the most popular, with a core contention that there are infinite expanding universes in some larger multiverse space. There, each universe might have its own laws of physics, perhaps sharing elements in common with other universes, but in a unique combination that's all its own. Perhaps in one universe, there might be no strong or weak nuclear force, but four different types of gravity, whereas another is governed by 2,000 different nuclear forces with no gravity at all. One analysis by theoretical physicist Andre Linder suggested that based on the laws of physics as laid out by string theory, there are 10 to the 500th power possible ways that the theoretically feasible range of laws of physics could possibly configure themselves. 
In this version of the theory, we only exist at all because our universe happens to be one of an infinite set of universes where the conditions exist to create us, whereas in a much larger infinite set of universes, the conditions make life forms like us impossible. In this version of the multiverse concept, there might even be an infinite set of universes that are identical to ours, as well as infinite sets of universes with just tiny, nearly imperceptible differences. We're in universe B, and in universe B, everything across cosmological history is exactly the same, except I didn't shout, MY NAME IS SIMON! Right then, like I just did, it was... I shouldn't do that. People will wonder about me. Repeat that line of thinking for all the infinities compounding on all the other infinities until your head hurts and you don't want to think about this anymore and, well, you're probably getting the idea. <laughs> If that interpretation of multiverse theory somehow wasn't mind-bending enough, though, there's also the many worlds interpretation, a multiverse concept that's rooted in quantum theory. Borrowing a hypothetical pose by the Adler Planetarium, say you're trying to model the position of an electron, using equations that predict how that electron will move across time from the position it has right now. Unlike in conventional mathematics, where plugging factors into an equation would give you a precise outcome, quantum physics instead provides an infinite number of possible answers, each with a certain probability of being true, while in reality, only one is true. To quote from Adler directly, the most straightforward interpretation is that we were wrong to think that an electron is something that could ever be in a single place. But here, the multiverse arises from that same idea of an infinite number of ways that a given thing could be, and that instead of the single reality we perceive, there are infinite realities happening all around us. Erwin Schrodinger fans are, of course, way ahead of us here, but we trust that they'll be expounding on this particular vision of the multiverse in the comments. There are other rifts on this interpretation that suggest that everything that happens in our universe inherently creates new multiverses based on all the possible outcomes of a single action that didn't happen. Every time you blink, every time you stand up or sit down, and every time you speak, infinite multiverses come spiraling off of you, continuing forever in the aftermath. It's pretty trippy stuff. And then there's one of what's called the Tegmarkian interpretations, four basic levels of multiverse that a cosmologist named Max Tegmark thought up in the early 2000s. Eternal inflation and the many worlds concept are Tegmarkian, but so is the idea of an ergodic universe. Our universe, basically, except it's so incomprehensibly big that even the amount beyond the observable universe that we think exists is still only a tiny fraction. In fact, it might even be infinite, and in a single universe that's truly infinite, a multiverse multiverse of sorts becomes possible. If we accept the premise that the laws and constants of our universe are stable, then in a universe that is infinitely big, where matter distributes relatively evenly and predictably like it does in the observable universe, all the possible iterations of what might have happened after the Big Bang will be realized somewhere. According to that interpretation, our universe would probably have even a little copy of Earth and a copy of the solar system out there somewhere far beyond the outer bounds of what we'll ever be able to perceive. And if the universe is infinite, then there will be infinite little Earths and little solar systems out there. Now, at this point, we trust that all of this is getting to be a little bit much. So rather than keep on naming infinite multiverses for an infinite span of time here on the channel, we'll just name drop a few more. The quilted multiverse theory suggests that our universe is indeed infinite and that as a result, every possible event will occur an infinite number of times. The twin world multiverse suggests that other worlds exist that include a copy of all fundamental particles in our universe basically creating an anti-universe for reasons that would probably make more sense if we could spend several hours down the rabbit hole of dark energy. The simulated multiverse theory suggests that our universe and most universes exist as computer simulations and that whoever's creating universes probably wouldn't stop at just one. The cyclic multiverse theory suggests that an infinite sequence of universes follow each other in time rather than existing side by side in space, while the so-called M-theory suggests that space-time actually consists of 10 to 11 space-time dimensions and as a result Result, other dimensions can act as a host for other universes. Finally, black hole multiverses suggest that the matter consumed by black holes will go on to create other universes within that black hole, and that we in our universe are probably living inside a black hole too. There are others, most of them will break your brain, and that's completely fine. It's a very strange thing. But it's here, in this nasty, beautiful feeling of being simply overwhelmed by the possibilities, that we can finally take a step back and ask the question that really matters. Is any of it actually real? 
For the sake of our audience, we won't do the smarmy thing and wag our finger and ask which multiverse. Not least because going into the specific counter arguments for every multiverse we've touched on would take stupid amounts of time. Instead, we'll keep it simple. Since all of these ideas about the multiverse are constrained to describing things we can't perceive and have no way of actually identifying or measuring, how do we know that any of this is legitimate? The short answer is, of course, that we just don't. The issues we just listed are the fundamental problems with this entire idea. That we have precisely zero means to analyze or explore a multiverse of any sort, and not only do we have no means of measuring them now, but our current understanding of physics suggests that we and our descendants simply never will. None of these theories will ever be tested. And the lack of any tangible evidence in a multiverse's favor leads many physicists and philosophers to land on two separate but tightly interrelated conclusions. Conclusion number one, the idea of a multiverse simply shouldn't be given the time of day, since according to the rules that govern the modern scientific process, no multiverse theory could ever be legitimized in any way. Conclusion number two, even if multiverses do exist, they're a waste of time to study or even imagine. After all, we'll never interact with them, we'll never study them, we'll never learn from them, so kinda, well, what's the point? Yet as contrarian as it may be, the simple perceptual realities that cause the multiverse theory to be thrown out by so many experts are the same realities that lead many others to embrace it. The multiverse will never be confirmed, or studied directly, or even perceived. Put simply, it'll never be proved. But it'll also never be disproved. And although its skeptics will tout that fact as evidence that multiverse talk is just silly, its supporters will argue that there is absolutely no basis to rule multiverse theories out. Although fictional media has certainly had its way with a range of multiverse interpretations, some a good deal less grounded in theory than others, we're not talking about those works of fiction when we discuss multiverse theory itself. We're talking about conclusions drawn after very talented scientists have chased down our universe's governing principles to what they assess to be their logical conclusion. And in that conclusion, they found a multiverse. Sure, they argue, we'll never be able to directly establish their existence or measure them using the tools known to us now, but the same could be said for any number of guiding principles of astrophysics, and we're not dismissing those half as easily as some scientists dismiss the multiverse. And while that direct evidence scientists so crave is still very, very far off and possibly impossible to find, that doesn't mean that there will never be indirect evidence to support claims of the multiverse. Some theorists rely on what's referred to as the anthropic principle, basically the idea that we referred to before, where it's highly improbable that just a single universe would develop into the precise conditions that create life like ours, but where in an infinite multiverse it's far more acceptable to suppose that we simply happen to be in a universe that supports life. Other theorists respond to such an idea, like physicist David Gross did when speaking to Space.com in 2016, quote, I hate it. It flies in the face of the traditional goal of physics, which is to explain what otherwise appear to be coincidences, to explain some of the bizarre features of nature that seem to be necessary for existence. According to Gross and theorists who agree with him, the anthropic principle simply dismisses everything about this universe as an accident. And while that could be the case, it also would mean that the fundamental of physics lose their meaning. Of course, proponents of the multiverse theory might respond by suggesting that the multiverse couldn't care less about what we humans interpret as the meaning of fundamental physics, but we imagine that's roughly when brawls start breaking out in the science department. Other theories suggest that as the limits of mathematical understanding of our universe begin to push past what's technically feasible to test and measure, the entire idea of scientific proof needs to be reevaluated. One mathematical philosopher, Richard Dawid, suggested in a 2013 book that if a theory can survive without being one-upped by any competing theories if it seems more and more feasible the more you study it, and if it's generated from a line of thought that generated other theories that went on to be supported later, then it might as well be accepted as true until one of those conditions changes. Since then, a range of other physicists and theorists have supported that interpretation, agreeing that although we've reached a collective point where theory will fail to cross into hard science, those theories are worth pursuing anyway. And some physicists even claim that they really have discovered proof of a multiverse. One such claimant, the astrophysicist Rangaram Shari, suggested in 2015 that an analysis of cosmic radiation has identified a radiation signal about 4,500 times as strong as it should have been. And from that signal came an indicator that the protons and electrons of the early universe at that particular place and time were acting in a way that suggested they were in a place where the ratio of matter particles to photons was some 65 times 
times greater than that of the observable universe. That signal is often brought up as evidence that an alternate or parallel universe existed, based on the near impossible probability of such an anomaly having happened in our own early universe. Even Rangaram Cheri, who observed this signal, has emphasized that the idea of an alternate universe will require a hell of a lot more support than just a single signal, and skeptics have suggested that the signal might have been a consequence of other phenomena in our known universe. Other scientists have suggested that size, smoothness, and flatness of the universe indicates that it's consistent with what the inflation version of multiverse theory would predict, while statistical analysis suggests that it's far more likely that a multiverse does exist than it doesn't. But all the while, the lingering base argument of the skeptics remains the same. None of this is proof, and the multiverse theory itself simply cannot be proven. Put together all the arguments in favor of multiverse theory and all the arguments against it, and put all the idealists and the skeptics and the pragmatists in the same room till they simply can't stand to argue anymore, and the one thing that they'll probably agree on is that for now, the idea of a multiverse comes down to a metaphysical issue. It can't be proven, it can't be disproven, it's a matter of belief, and some would say it's a matter of faith. Followers of a religion have the the indirect evidence they look to in order to justify their faith in a higher power. And although the indirect evidence that multiverse proponents use is different, although they may not agree with its categorization as a higher power, the same fundamental and fundamentally human process is taking place. When confronted by such an idea, some choose to believe and others don't. So if you're asking, like we did at the outset of this episode, whether the multiverse is actually a real thing, then we've got to turn the question back on you. Is it? One day science might give us an answer but it probably won't. And whether you believe or not, life will go on. So, is the multiverse real? Well, in the end, we suppose that the answer is up to you. Thanks for watching.